My, my. State of the world. When you pay attention to it, when you look at the happenings around the globe, nothing seems to be settling. There is nothing happening in today's world that looks promising. Almost everything is upsetting. People right now are having a very difficult time finding solace in their daily lives. There is massive displeasure that has seeped into the lives of many. People see the calamity of others, some things that they do not want in their lives, and they see those things and they empathize with those who are in unfortunate circumstances. Many people see these things on the horizon. They see the dark cloud cover. They feel the heat rising. I'm speaking metaphorically here. Some people see these things upon them and they say, well, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. Really? Who taught them that? Who instilled defeatism into their minds? See, a defeatist is someone who expects or is excessively ready to accept failure, even death, without struggle. With that mentality, you have given up before you've even started. Take a look around you, and this is very interesting. Take a look at the number of locations around the world in which, in just the past few years, have had calamitous events occur. And in every single place where these events have occurred, no one has moved an inch. It doesn't matter how horrible the event is, they will not budge. Many people have already surrendered, and so unfortunately it makes no difference if you go down with them. I want to discuss this for a moment because we've forgotten purpose. We have forgotten reason. And we have been warned about living in this state of being. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And that is why in today's world, with most people, when something calamitous is approaching, they just won't see it coming until it's upon them. So let me ask everyone a question, a serious question. When you log on to the internet, when you turn your television to the news, what percentage of the media do you believe is authentic or real? And what percentage do you believe is completely fabricated? Is it 50-50? Probably not. Do you believe the mainstream is trying to put out the truth? Or do you believe it is mostly deception? You see, in a world where we have all these revolutionary events, the climate, the shootings, the mass die-offs, viruses, the topic of the moon and Mars, the space program, when you have governments trying to make sudden shifts in power, we all see these things often from the comfort of our own homes and we don't tend to question the validity of the matter until later on. Some, however, do question these things right away. But see how does the average person know what's real and what's not? You could say, well, I think everything is fake until someone proves that it's real or everything is real until someone proves it to be fake. Either way, figuring that out takes time. 
I mean, there are people who are concerned about the shape of the earth. I'm not. Why? Because I don't have time to be concerned about that. How many of you have that kind of time to spend on such a matter? You see, even after the coming of the internet, there weren't that many independent or private journalists. Most people were still following mainstream news. It's really within the last decade or so that we have all these independent sources along with the mainstream. And what's happening is, because there is so much news out there, some things that may be important get overlooked. They get lost in the flood of media and information. That really shortens the attention span of the public and it causes them to scroll through information a bit too quickly. I'll give you an example. Now, on several occasions, I have said that one of the things we will need to keep an eye on, one of the things we will have to look out for are strange auroras in the sky. Now, there are, of course, scientists who study auroras. They hold information, what's happening in the upper atmosphere and particle interactions. Understand that when you have a science that has been around for some time and you don't ever hear a peep out of those scientists, fine. But when you do, when they start observing something that has not been observed before, I think that at least deserves a bit of investigation. So gravity waves seem to be a term making its way around the scientific community. Something that we once theorized, but now it is being used to explain certain phenomena. And if you were paying attention, sometime last year we had observers reporting strange auroras. Green auroras with patterns of streaking light, named the dunes. When the sun emits charged particles and they hit our atmosphere, you can determine what type of particles are being interacted with by the color of the glow. Green or red colors usually means oxygen. Nitrogen will glow blue or purple. We've had people witnessing purple skies, strange auroras, gravitational wave pulses have been detected and imaged by satellites. We have had confirmation on several occasions of exotic particles hitting us in pulses. Not so much from the sun, but from other bodies in space. This is happening, but not many people understand what that means. How many of you are familiar with the LIGO project? This is the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. The purpose of which is to detect gravitational waves as they pass through Earth. When you have two massive objects in space, in this case two black holes, as they orbit each other and close in to merge or collide, they distort the space-time around them, giving off energy in the form of gravitational waves. These waves, moving at the speed of light, squeeze and stretch space as they pass through it. Now sometime last year, LIGO, which was offline for some time, got up and running and within two weeks of being online, it detected wave signatures from what could be two black holes merging. The effects of this in space, aside from bending space-time, is that when this happens in front of another object in the distance, such as a star further out, it causes gravitational lensing and the distortion of the light that is coming from a star behind it. So it wasn't until 2015 that they had started to detect these waves with LIGO. So recently. And back then they had detected several gravitational wave events. It went offline for about a year and a half and since it has been back online, they get maybe one gravitational wave event per week. What they do is they take a laser and point it at a beam splitter. And the idea is when the two lasers are lined up just perfectly at a mass or in this case a mirror, the reflection of the laser back into itself cancels out the laser. But since gravity waves distort space and time, when a gravity wave passes through the detectors, the distortion is just enough to throw the laser's calibration off, thus the laser no longer cancels itself out, and you end up with a signal. 
that's the short, simple version. The idea of gravitational waves stems from Einstein's theory of relativity, and LIGO is a concept that started back in 1985. It went through about four stages of construction, and, and they didn't detect their first event until 2015. And when you think about the scope of this project and the length of time it took for them to achieve this, I think you would need to know for sure that these waves exist before you can commit to building an entire facility dedicated to this purpose. Does that make sense? I mean, do we really fund and build these extremely complex machines and detectors for something that might be there? When it comes down to the science of gravitational wave detection, it is quite complex. The detectors they have constructed are also comparable to the ones they have at CERN. And there is not just one, but several. LIGO, Virgo, CAGRA, GEO 600, LIGO India, just to give you an idea of the importance of what they are trying to detect here. Folks, isn't it interesting that they have all these complex facilities that you never hear about? Most people don't even know they exist until the thing that they study there becomes an issue. So the reason I am presenting all this is because it was only last month that scientists at LIGO detected gravitational wave burst that hit our planet on January 14th, of which LIGO did not release the source of. See, they have always been detecting gravity waves. This was a burst from the direction of the star Betelgeuse. And Betelgeuse has dimmed recently, but it didn't come from Betelgeuse. Oh crap, I said it three times. You see, whenever you see scientists getting excited about something, you have to ask yourself, why would they get excited about something that is probably the most destructive force in the universe? I'll tell you why. Because they are not concerned about the sake of humanity. They are concerned about their achievements. This is something we have to watch out for if we are not careful because whenever something happens that may have a negative impact on Earth, these guys are in total denial. And they will always try to explain it away. Oh, it's probably nothing. People thought that the gravity burst was Betelgeuse going supernova. And they sit there and tell you all that if Betelgeuse did go supernova, that it's too far away to affect us. And if you believe that, God help you. They do these things to make you all forget about it. They try to shift your focus onto something else, away from the real issue. Some significant earthquakes did occur around the time this thing was detected, but they made absolutely sure to not point that out. What they are doing is a show for your consumption. They think you are all stupid and that they can pull the wool over your eyes because they think nobody but them understands this stuff. Besides, they have all the detection equipment. Who are you to tell them what's going on, right? Something is upon us, and they know it. And they are desperately using their bag of tricks to distract and deceive. The purpose of which is to maintain control. There is more madness to come. I just wanted to make sure that you are all aware of things like this. Because a time will come when we will have to take a second look at LIGO and the other facilities around the world like it. These things are brought to our attention for a reason. Not because they are new discoveries, but because they are having trouble hiding the effects of these events. A revelation is upon us. It just all depends upon how you perceive the truth. <laughs>